Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse in the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Shuva Yisrael. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Shabbos Parshas Hazinu, which is Shabbos Shuva, in the year Tafshin Mem Aleph, 43 years ago. The Rebbe went on to certify and edit this Hasidic discourse in honor, in honor of Shabbos Shuvah, which was Vav Tishrei, the sixth day of the month of Tishrei, in the year Tafshin Mem Tes, 34 years ago. So then the Hasidic discourse is based on the verse of the uh, of Torah for Shabbos Shuvah, where the prophet says, Shuva Yisrael, return Jewish people, Ad Hashem Elokecha till Yudke Vavke, the powerful name of Hashem as Elokecha, your God, Ki Kashalta Bavainecha, because you stumbled in your sins. The Rebbe brings from the Alta Rebbe that he explains that this that it says, Shuva Yisrael, return Jewish people, Ad until Havai Elokecha, in other words, that Yudke Vavke should be your God, you know, seemingly the question is, it says, Ad until Havaya Lakecha. Seemingly say Shuvah Yisrael return Li Havaya Lakecha. To God, your God. Why does the prophet say Ad until? In other words, so the, the author explains and he says, because the, the prophet is saying is that the quantification of Shuvah is to the point where Havaya becomes Alakecha. The infinite God becomes your God. If it would just say le havaya le kach, it means it returns to God. Here he's saying totally different. Ah, you, there's a goal you have to get to. And the goal is that yud ke vav ke should become your God. That's point number one that it brings. The Rebbe goes on to ask and he asks the question as follows. What are we saying? That you have to return to God up to the point of that yud ke vav ke becomes your God. So Rebbe says, who is this applied to? And who are you asking that they are such a sinner that they have to do such a type of tshuva returning to Hashem? The fact is, and we know the Rebbe is the greatest optimist, and the Rebbe believes in people. The fact is, the Rebbe says we're on a very high level, even before you return to Hashem. And as, like it says in the in, in the verse, Shuva Yisrael, who's returning? Yisrael. We know that the Jewish people have two names, Yaakov, Jacob. And Yisrael. What does Yisrael mean? Because he fought with the angel of God and he was successful. In other words, means means that you're a ruler over the concealment of the of, of Hashem Elohim, the concealed part of God, and of the attributes that come out from the person. So we're dealing with Yisrael. You know, as we're saying, Shuva Yisrael, Yisrael is someone that was able to su- succeed against darkness. So if that's the case, he's able to su- succeed against darkness. What kind of sins does he have? That he has to have this intense tshuva. If it said tshuva, some loser, fine, you have to go to al But you're dealing with Israel, the guy already returns. So, and he's successful. What is the idea of this type of tshuva? Now, even though we know that tshuva, returning to Hashem, is not only for sins, but the purpose of tshuva is, comes from the word of tush of hay, to return ourselves to the source. And it was like it says in the verse, for Ruach Toshua that the spirit returns to God that God gave him. And what type of truth is it referring to when the spirit returns? It's speaking about holy tzaddikim, righteous people. But and it says specifically in the verse, Shuva Yisrael, return Jewish people, Kikashalta, because you stumbled in your sin. But if someone is such a high level that they're returning to its source, so how does the avoid, how does the sin come into place? If you're saying that something returning to the next level and the next level, great. But it doesn't mean you're in a bad place. It doesn't mean you're sinning. Okay, so that that's the, that's the second question. Third question I ask is as follows: <clears throat> What does it say in, in the verse afterwards? Kachu imachem dvarim. In other words, don't you don't have to come with 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 uh, with uh, sacrifices, etc. Just come with your words. Repent with your words. V'shuvu al Hashem returns to Yudke Vavke. In other words, at, seemingly after it says Shuvu Yisrael, return Jewish people up to the point that Yudke Vavke becomes your God. 
So what is it? What what is what does the prophet adding take your words and returns to Hashem? You already returned. It's a redundancy. Also, we have to understand what it says afterwards. Call Tisa Ava and wipe away the sin. In other words, what what is what are we saying? What's the request to wipe away the uh, wipe away the sin? So, in other words, what does that mean? After the the uh, Shuba Yisrael on the highest level until Yud Kevav Kevav becomes your God. And you're, 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 you're returning to Hashem. You need to have another repentance. Almost like three levels here. So the question is, what's all these three levels? Also, we have to understand that in the first part of Tshuva, where it says, Shuva Yisrael, and the third one, it says, a sin. in the first part. Tisav in the third part. However, in the middle one, it doesn't say anything about sinning. So why is it the first one who mentions sin and the last one and the middle one doesn't mention sin? Trevor says the point of the, 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 the point of the explanation is as follows, based on the altar of his teaching in the Kutta Torah, and he explains like this, when it comes to tshuva, returning to Hashem, there's three levels of returning to Hashem. Watch the three levels. Level number one is returning, which is called surmeira, going away from evil, from negativity, from bad, etc., then there's a level of truva means, Asay Toiv, you're doing good things. And then there's truva, which is called Bake Shalim, to search out peace. What's peace referring to? Peace is referring to learning Torah. Because we know that whoever learns Torah makes peace on the heavenly abode and on the, on the, on the physical materialistic abode. The power of Torah is huge. And as we know, it says the whole reason why God gave us Torah and the whole purpose of Torah was to bring peace on the world. So again, so there's three levels of, of returning to Hashem. One is Sir Mirah, going away from evil. The other one is doing good. And the third one is what? Is peace, which is basically done through Torah. Now, these three levels of returning in these verses, where it says Shuva Yisrael is the first part, the Shuvu Hashem, the second shu, uh, returning, and where it says the third part, Amroi Lav Tal Hashem, don't do, don't do any, uh, uh, wipe away the sin, is referring to the three levels of Shuvu, Surmeira, Asay Toiv, and Bakishalo, and that's why there's three different, three different levels and expressions of Shuvu. And that's why it, these verses is the verses that begin the Aftorah Shabbos Shuvu. Why? Because on Shabbos Shuvu, you have to have all three levels. Surmeira, going away from evil, doing good, and, and peace, which is through Torah. And like he says, he brings a powerful t- uh, a story from the previous Rebbe. That, and, he, and the previous Rebbe said that by the, the Tzamach Tzedek, the third Chabad Rebbe, that on Shabbos Tshuva, he actually lit three candles of Tshuva, three candles of repentance. And the Tzamach Tzedek said, why do you have to have three candles? And just because there's three levels of Tshuva. And the previous rabbi explained the, what, what are the three levels of tshuva, and he explained that that's the three levels of tshuva explained in the Kutta Torah. Sumei Rav, Asi Tov, and Baka Shalom. As a matter of fact, many have the custom to light on Shabbos tshuva not one candle for tshuva, but they actually light three. And that's why in the first tshuva, the first level Sumei Rav, it says tshuva, return, kikashalt b'menach, because you stumbled in your sin. However, when it comes to the second level of tshuva. Which is which is corresponding to do good. It says Vashuvu El Hashem return to Hashem and doesn't mention about a sin because in the first one sermon are you going away from evil? So mention the sin. In the second one, which Asi toys, it doesn't mention sin <clears throat> because if, again the first one is sermon Ra, like is, is someone stumbling in the sin, and the second one is Asi toys, and that's also why in the first shuva. It mentions the Hashem Elokim and Hashem Elokecha. It still mentions the Hashem Elokim because it's Surmei Ra. And the second one, it only mentions the Hashem Yud Kevavke, the Shuvah Lavaya. And when it comes to the third Shuvah, it says, Imru Elov, speak to him. It doesn't say, there's no levels. Why? Because the first level of Shuvah, which is Surmei Ra, is the goal is that Yud Kevavke should be Elokeinu. The second level of Shuvah Asitoiv is to cleave and, and, and to connect with Yud Kevav Kei, where it's higher than Elohim, that's why he doesn't mention Elohim, and the third level of Shuvah, Baki Shalim, by learning Torah, you literally connect, 
and I'll say it in Hebrew and translate it with Atzmus Oyrein Saif, the essence of the infinite light of Hashem, which is higher than Yud K Vav K. So based on this, we have a beautiful explanation the way it flows. This, the, you know, the, 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 the prophet opens up with three different levels. The first level is to return ad yud kei vav kei shmi elokim, which is sumira. The second one, shuv el hashem, which is yud kei vav kei. And the third one is even higher, baka shalom through learning Torah. Now, Trevor goes on to explain this like this. The difference between returning to Hashem of sumira versus asay toiv and baka shalom is that the truth when we return to Hashem from a place of sumira, what does that mean? going away from evil, that you don't want that any God forbid sin that we've done should be like a, a blockage between us and Hashem. So what is, again, what is the truth of Sumira that we're, we're human, we may, we, unfortunately we're not perfect, and because we're not perfect it creates a blocks the energy between us and Hashem. So Sumira means that we're trying to clean out the blockage, there shouldn't be any blockage between us and Hashem. That's the first part. What is the tshuva, the repentance of Asi Toiv and Bakke Shalom? Is the goal over there is not, is not you don't have to wear blockages, but the goal is to bring in a higher light, to bring in greater greater energy. <clears throat> Why is that? Because what happens is when Hashem gives you a gift, and as we know, Hashem is good, and the nature of good is to do good. So when Hashem gives, yeah, it's a great gift, but it's it's a finite gift. But when a person does the work, when we do our tshuva, when we return to Hashem, whether it's the getting rid of the blockage, or more importantly, bringing in the positive energy through Asi Toiv and Baka Shalom, we have the power to bring in infinite. So Hashem is good to us. Yeah, life is good and amazing. Hashem gives us everything, but it's finite. But when we, we go ahead and do mitzvot and we, and we pray and we study Torah, we actually bring in infinite blessings. And like Jehovah says, what we know, it's brought down and it says, when it says in the Torah and the prophets, so in the prophet it says, Eila Toilois Peretz. This is the offspring of Peretz. Now, Toilois can be written with a Vav or without a Vav. So it says, Toilois with two Vavs, Sof, Vav, Lamid, Dalid, Vav, Sof. So it's like complete. In other words, the idea is that Toilois is not, it's, it's not lacking, it's complete. When reference to Peretz. When Hashem created the heaven and the earth, so it says, Eila told us Hashemayim va'aretz bi'barom. This is the offspring of the heaven and the earth when Hashem created it. Also told us in the, in, in, in the beginning of Chumash is also written Mali. It has a, it's spelled also Sav Vav Lamed Dalad Vav Sav. They both have, um, they both have, they're both complete. Um, and why, why is that? Because Hashem created the world. He created the world complete. But nevertheless, when Hashem created the heaven and, and, and the and, and the earth, so <clears throat> even though He created incomplete, but who created the world? Hashem created the world. It's called Melmaila, came from Hashem. In other words, Hashem, but, but because Hashem created the world and He created complete, so it's finite. The world is finite. We're not living in an infinite world. However, when it comes to Ela Tolis Paritz, when is that going to happen when Mashiach comes? And what's going to happen when Mashiach comes? Uh, what creates all the revelations of, of what's, what, what's, what's going to be there when Mashiach comes? It happens, like Dr. Rav explains in Tanya clearly, through our Maisim and our Avoida, through our actions and our effort. And that's why when it comes to Mashiach, it says he's going to be from the children of Peretz. Peretz comes to the idea of it breaks through all the boundaries. He's going to break through everything. Why is that? Because when Hashem created the world, yes, it was complete, but it was finite because it comes a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. However, when Mashiach comes, it's going to be complete, and but it's going to break through the boundaries. You're not stronger. Why? Because it's coming through our effort and our work in, in, in Gullus. And here you see tremendous inspiration and, and important to know that our avoidance, sometimes we feel like we go through certain struggles in life, etc. But remember, through our struggles, we're creating infinite blessings for ourselves in this world, and more importantly, when Mashiach comes. Now, so in this, so talking about avoida, our avoida, knows when we, in order to bring down the infinite energy through through our work. So, w what creates that greatest blessing that comes through being occupied in learning Torah, Bakke Shalom, the highest level of tshuva. And that's higher even than drawing down energy through doing mitzvot, which is more asetoiv. So in other words, asetoiv is mitzvot. 
Baka Shalom is learning Torah. Both of us draw down infinite energy. But learning Torah draws down even greater energy. That's why these classes are very important. You learn Torah, you're bringing down the most powerful energies. Why is that? Because besides the fact when a person does a mitzvah, what do you draw down? You draw down, yes, makif. It hovers over you. And, but when you learn Torah, it becomes internalized. You think about it, you study, you meditate. The, the, the godly energy comes internalized within you. So A, mitzvah is makif versus Torah is premius. Mitzvah hovers over versus Torah gets internalized. But also the, the, the light gets drawn down through Torah is much higher, much more powerful. Why? Because when a person does a mitzvah, you draw down from Oyra Soivev. And when a person is busy in learning Torah and meditating in Torah, you literally draw down, I'll say it in Hebrew, I think it's very powerful, you draw down Atzmus Oyra Soif, the essence of the infinite light, which is even higher than Soivev. So based on this, Herb explains as follows. <clears throat> what is Shuvah Yisrael? Return Jewish people and the first part, because you stumble, stumble in your sin. So what do we say? What's that first part referring to? It's referring to Surmira, going away from evil. So what does that mean? That even somebody that's in the level of Yisrael, which is a high level, it's possible that you have Kashalt you there, there are sins there. What does that mean? It doesn't mean, God forbid, that something lacking. And was, which we find it by, by, by righteous people as well. But, but what does that mean? That it's possible that you have certain sins that were done that blocks the energy on a very, very fine level. And therefore, because there's something blocking, you have to go ahead and, and the first level of tshuva is Surmei Ra to clean up that there shouldn't be anything blocking. You want to have, a, you want to have like a clear flow to come down. Now, this that was saying that even by a tzaddik, you have the repentance of Surmayra to clean out any blockages. So it's self-understood that tshuva of cleaning the blockages, it's a mitzvah. It's not like an optional thing. It's a mitzvah to clean the blockages. And like the altar writes clearly, in Tanya and the Geras tshuva, mitzvah says tshuva. Tshuva clearing the blockages of mitzvah. In other words, therefore, what does that mean? <clears throat> that the mitzvah of tshuva applies, like all the mitzvahs, to everyone. Even great tzaddikim, holy people. Now, since what is tshuva? Like the author writes in, in Tanya, in Agaris of tshuva, what does tshuva mean? How do you, how do you create bl uh, unblocking the blockages? Tshuva means that you're making a commitment, I'm letting go of any sins. Surmira, anything that we all have, whether it's um, uh, emotional, physical, whatever the sin is, uh, materialistic sin, whatever the sin is, there's 365 negative commandments, 248 positive. So unfortunately, there's plenty of options, uh, plenty of opportunities to sin. So the point is that when, what is, what is, the, what does Surmira mean? That you're letting go of sinning. Surmira. So, so what does that mean? Besides the fact that by even holy tzaddikim, righteous, righteous, complete tzaddikim, it has, what do they have to have? They have to have, they have to go through the experience of the repentance of Ruach, the, the, we learned from the, from the first, where it says, where the verse says, a Ruach Toshua, a Kim Shalom, where you have to return the spirit to God that gave, gave the spirit. And like the author explains in the Kut Torah, in that parsha, that the source of the, or the soul is, for where's the source of the soul? It comes from Elohim, from God. Ashana Sanana, that God gave us the soul. What, what, knows what's the source of, 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 of the, of the, of the Neshama? Ashana, that Nasan God gave. And what was that level? That's coming from the level of Tsur, which is actually higher than Yudke Vavke. What, what is a Tsur? A Flintstone. So it's higher than Yudke Vavke, so it's a concealment which doesn't even exist. And drawing down, when the neshama gets drawn down from this level of tzur, which is basically higher than yud kei vav kei concealment, which is that you can, it's not tangible. And how, so how does it come down to this world? It comes down to the level, God gave it to us. And we know that when the rule is, I'll say it in Hebrew, when someone gives someone a gift, you're giving with your whole heart. You're giving with a good eye. You don't just give and you're angry about giving. Why would you give it? When you give, you're happy to give. Hashem is giving the neshama. 
And what is the tshuva of the, the spirit going back to the Kimashana, which means you have to return the neshama to its source, to its source, which is higher than you gave up. You know, even the soul, when it comes down in the physical body, because as we know, tshuva is, like all the mitzvahs, tshuva was given to a soul and a body. But what's the ultimate goal? That should be totally bottled, should be totally unified and, 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 and become one with its original source to the level of like he says, it's higher than, than even Yudke Bavke. So even on that level, you'll, you have to have literal tshuva. So now, the Rebbe says, one second. What did we just say? Even a tzaddik, someone that's working on ruach, tashav, al-kimash, what's his goal? To return his soul to the highest level. But the fact is, we know that in the, in the world of Atzilut, the highest world, and even in the personalized world of Atzilut, what does it say in the world of Atzilut? Over there, it's totally godliness. Like it says, lo yigur harad, evil doesn't exist there. And since the, re- the repentance of a tzaddik, like it says in the is going back on the highest level, higher than Barasa, Yitzarta, and Afachtabi, and as all the worlds of Ri and CRC is going back to the world of Atzilus, and even higher than Asatbi. You know, so if that's the case, how is it that a Tzaddik can have the, uh, the truth of Surmeira? So what the Rebbe is explaining over here is bringing up a very powerful question. What did we just learn? What is the avoid of, 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 of Surmeira? Getting rid of the blockages, letting go of the sin, but and it applies to everybody. It's a mitzvah. Therefore, it applies to tzaddik also. The fact is, our tzaddik, our tzaddik is in the level of what a ru a, a ru. He's he's he, he's returning his spirit to the place where God gave him. Meaning to say, is it's higher than asiya yitzira bria atzilos, even higher than kivavke. So, how is it possible you can tell me that tzaddik has such a type of sin that he has to return? Where's this? Where's what? How? How does the truth of of, of Sumerah apply to a tzaddik? Rebbe says possibly you can explain based on what it says in the Kutta Torah. And um, Kutta Torah says from the Alter Rebbe says like this: Someone that based on the level of their neshama, their soul, is has some kind of a connection to the avoda, to the work of ruach, which basically means asi type just doing good. And how much more so if someone is really connected to the level of a soul of Bakisha and they sit and they learn Torah. You have certain people, they're totally plugged in. They're just doing one mitzvah, another mitzvah, learning more Torah, teaching Torah, etc. So what happens is, even on you're on that level, that sin doesn't even exist on your level. But what, what happens when you're not doing it fully, it's considered a blemish. So if you're someone that's focused on doing mitzvahs and other mitzvah, learning Torah and more Torah, whereas if you're not doing it 100%, it's a blemish. You could be doing it 100 and you're doing it 95%. You could be learning Torah 100 and you're learning 95 It's still a blemish. Not only that, when a person's on a very, very high level, so then the, the, the um, deficiency, even though it's so so fine and so minute, etc., it's actually the sin is greater than a simple person. Because since you know and you're connecting to a high level, it's like, for example, you have a beautiful white wall, 100% pristine white, and you have one little lot, it shows if the wall more than if the wall was dirty. Why is that? Because on a white wall, one dot is going to show more. So when someone is on a very, very high level with a 95% doing mitzvahs and learning Torah, that 5% unfortunately sticks out. And it's worse than a simple person that doesn't maybe learn or do mitzvahs at all or, 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 or on a much lower scale. And the Torah brings from the Maggid of Mezrich, and he says like this, a very powerful insight, that the strange and erroneous thoughts of holy righteous people create more of a blemish than huge gross sins of an ignoramus if you're such a scholar a small sin is it's much more much more powerful my Torah gives an example that uh, it says that if, if, if you're a Torah scholar, you, your garments have to be clean and you have to be respectful. And if there's a small little, uh, you know, mark on there, it, it's, it's totally disrespectful. Versus someone that wears dirty clothing and you have a big blotch, no one even notices it. So based on this, Torah explains, you possibly can say, so what's the mitzvah of truva? We're trying to get to what's this mitzvah of truva that Tzadik has? Which we said before is 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 going away from any sin. 
So what kind of tshuva is there of Sur Meira by a holy tzaddik? So you can say that what the tshuva that there was a lacking in his avoida of Asay Toiv, or in the avoid of Bakr Shalom, which means in doing mitzvahs or learning Torah. So this tshuva is also going away from sin, because it's considered a sin. Why? Because his blemish is worse than a simple person. Now, so possibly that, that can be, like we're trying to find a resolution. But Rebbe says, but the fact is, but the fact that we say that there's three different types of tshuva, sur meira, going away from evil, asay toiv, doing good, and Bakr Shalom, so it's self-understood that the spiritual service of Asay Toiv and Bakay Shalom is a higher level in holiness, and therefore you can say that when you're lacking in mitzvahs, you're not a hundred, you're ninety-five percent, or you're 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 ninety-five percent learning Torah, you can say it's bad, even on a finite level. You can say fine, you're not a hundred percent in doing riches. You're not a hundred percent in learning Torah. But how can you say it's Sumerah? How can you say there's a sin that you have to go away from? So based on this, Rabbi strengthens the question. So what is the level of tshuva, which means going away from a sin by a tzaddik? And this the verse says, Shuva Yisrael. Yisrael, you tzaddik, you have to return because you stumbled in your sin. That even someone who's in the level of Yisrael has to have the tshuva of Sur Meira. So we're stuck now with a big question. What is this Shuva Yisrael? A person on the level of Yisrael, a, a holy person, a tzaddik, what kind of shuva, what kind of sin is he doing? So I'm just going to exp- explain this now, and he says like this. Well, instead of this, based on what it says in the Talmud, a story in the Talmud, it says that somebody, I'll say it in Hebrew, I'll translate it, someone that went ahead and made a gesture in front of the king, and the king asked what was the gesture, and unfortunately, they killed him. They killed him for making a gesture in front of the king. Whoa, a gesture? In front of the king, shaking your head, shaking your hand, you should be killed for it? Why is that? And the answer is, because when you're standing in front of the king, a person has to be, and I'll say it in Hebrew, I'll translate it, betachlis habitel, with ultimate, complete acceptance. There's no gestures, not with your head, not with your eyes, not with your hand. You're standing 100% humility in front of the king, out of respect. And if you're going ahead and you're making a gesture in front of the king, what's the problem? The problem is that you're showing as if you exist in front of the king. When you're standing in front of the king, the only one that exists is the king. And if you're standing, you're making a gesture, it means you have some the, e- the ego part of you is some, somehow alive. So, no, so in other words, when you're standing in front of the melech, in front of the king, and how much more so if you're standing in front of the Melech, Malchim, and Lochim, and you're standing in front of God, the person has to be total 100% acceptance. Bittal. No ego. Zero ego. Not easy. But, on the other hand, if you really realize you're standing in front of the king, it's automatic. Hak, who, who are we in front of the king, and especially the king of all the kings? So therefore, based on this service like this, even when a person serves Hashem. You pray, you study, you do mitzvot, etc. But you're serving Hashem as a mitzvah, as somebody that exists. Your ego is in the way. It means you're doing a mitzvah. Who's doing it? You're doing it. You're learning Torah. You're learning Torah. You're a mitzvah. You're a somebody. That's similar to somebody making a gesture in front of the king. So based on this, Yerba explains, even by a tzaddik gomer, a complete tzaddik, he also has to do the first level of tshuva, or sur meira. Why? Because since he's a complete tzaddik, serving Hashem with awe and love for Hashem, and, and, and spiritual delights for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and you're not totally humbled, you totally, you know, there's some of you that exist, and you're, so to speak, you're an independent individual that is an awe and loving Hashem, like the expression is, yes, Misha Oyev, over yes, Misha, there's, a, there's an existence that loves Hashem as an awe Hashem, like the author explains in Tanya. So in other words, your Kabbalah's El Malch Shaman, your acceptance in front of God, is not complete. And 
in reference to your level, you're considered in Hebrew, it's called a prikat oil. You're someone that took off the yoke of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and therefore, even by a holy tzaddik, you have to have the avoid of what? The truth of going away from evil. So in other words, what the Rebbe, this is the, like the heart of the Maimah, so what the explaining is, Shuvi Yisrael, Ad Hashem Alakecha, if you Yisrael, and Kikosha, what kind of sins, what kind of sins did I do? Up to the point that actually, yeah, the sin is, here's the sin, that you're not totally bottle, you're not totally standing in a, in a place of total um, uh, negating your ego, and because the ego is there, that is the sin. And that's why the verse says, Shuva Yisrael. Yes, Yisrael, this holy person that fought with the angel, has to return up to the point that Yud Kevavke becomes your God, and that's called a sin. Why? Because the repentance is on someone that's a level of Yisrael is that he's a yes, Mishra'i. You're someone that loves a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And what's the ultimate goal? Havaya, Yudke Vavke should become your God. In other words, what does that mean? Because in order to eradicate any ego, yes, Mishra'i, the only way to do that is by bringing in Yudke Vavke. Because when Yudke Vavke is present, that will knock out any ego. Why is that? Because when it comes to the name of Elohim, where God, referring to the God which is fine, which is fine, creates concealment and, and, and nature, etc. So when you have creation from the same Elohim, so then Hashem gets involved in the world. That means the world exists, Hashem gives, gives, allows the world to have its existence. Like it says, when Hashem created the world, it says, Barashas bar Elohim. When Hashem created the world, it was Elohim. And therefore, anything that was created from Elohim, they have their own, they feel like we exist. And when they go ahead and they have acceptance, there's something which is called Bittal Hayash. The, uh, the, the ego is accepting. However, when it comes to the name of Yudke Vavke, and when something is created from Yudke Vavke, so the creation is what is automatic. Like it says, Yahalu Hashem Hashem. Praising Yud Kevavke, Kihut Siva Venivro, that it realizes the only reason why it exists is because Hashem gave it a command to exist. And therefore, the, whatever was created has doesn't have any any feeling of, of its own identity. And as it's on the level of what? Bittal acceptance by Metsias. The whole thing doesn't exist. When there's a creation from Shem Alakim, it's Bittal Ayash. Yes, I'm somebody, I, I'm, 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 I'm accepting God, but I'm the somebody accepting God. However, Yud Kevav Kei, Spitzel Monsi, there's no existence, it's all about Hashem. And that's why the repentance of Keshal Tabavinecha, that we stumbled in our sin, and the first level of, of love of Yisrael, you know, somebody, yes, I'm someone that exists. What's the ultimate goal? How do you, how do you fix that? That Yud Kevav Kei becomes your God. What does that mean? When you bring in Yud Kevav Kei in your life, the infinite part of Hashem, and that becomes Elikecha, your power and your energy, then you come to the level of Bittal Metzias. And when you have Bittal Metzias, when you totally don't exist, voila, that's real tshuva. Now, <clears throat> in Lekut Torah, from the Alter Rebbe, he explains, what does it mean, Shuva Yisrael, return Jewish people, Ad Hashem Elikecha, what, what's, what's the ultimate goal? The repentance has to be that Yud Kei Vav Kei should be considered to you just like the name Elohim, which is of, 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 of constraints and concealment in relation to the infinite part, the Atzmas Yisrael, which is higher than Yud Kei Vav Kei. And this is an important idea. What Dara is explaining is like this, based on the Altar of the Torah. So we know like this, we have this physical world, which comes from Shem Elohim. Because of Shem Elohim, that's what we feel like we exist. The, our job is to realize, no, it comes from Yud Kei Vav Kei, and therefore we don't exist. So the Atom says in the Torah, what's true of Ad Hashem Alakecha, that higher than Yud Kei Vav Kei is the essence of the infinite part of Hashem. So we have to have the awareness and the clarity that Yud Kei Vav Kei is in a certain level just like Shem Alakim. Just like Shem Alakim creates that we exist, and Yud Kei Vav Kei creates that we don't exist, but compared to Atzmaseri and Saif, Yud Kei Vav Kei also exists. 
So the ultimate truth is not only that Yud Kei Vav Kei should be our God, here he's saying a step deeper, that we should realize that even Yud Kei Vav Kei is also a level, like Shem El Kim, a much higher level, but it's a level. And like, the, for example, the, 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 the insight into it says, Hashem, who will Kim? By Yom Kippur, by Ni'ilah, what do we say? Yud Kei Vav Kei is El Kim. What does that mean? That Zer Ampen, which is referring to Yud Kei Vav Kei, when it goes up to Atik, it's considered like El Kim. Why? Because then you realize it's a much higher level. So they're just going to explain this based on what it's known. That even, here we're, what are we saying? Yud Kei Vav Kei, wow! It's also like Shem Elokim, but Yud Kei Vav Kei, it's infinite. Should I ever explain it? Because even when it comes to Yud Kei Vav Kei, Yud Kei Vav Kei is, is this, Elokim created the world. Yud Kei Vav Kei is the source for creation of the world. So in other words, so Yud Kei Vav Kei comes from the word of Havaya. Which comes from the which, which comes from the word of mehava to create, but the creation is automatic. It's not like it gets involved in the world, but since it it's a source for the world, obviously the the world does exist in some level. So the ultimate level of acceptance is when you connect it to atzmas or insayif, which is higher than your kevav okay, which doesn't even where worlds don't even it, it's not on the radar at all. So now as we learned just now, three levels in Bittal. There's Bittal Ayesh, I'm a somebody, I can't accept God. Bittal Matsuya says, no, it's all about God, there's no, there's no somebody. The highest level of Bittal is that we don't even exist, period. There's no even room for it. So that's why Yud Kei Vav Kei could be like Elohim, because Atzma Sarasav is the ultimate. And that's why the repentance of Kikashat Barnecha, which means that I am someone exists is to the point of Ad Hashem Alakacha. Yud Kei Vav Kei should be like Shem Alakim, like the author explains that have, uh, uh, um, Yud Kei Vav Kei is also like Alakim, which means it's some kind of a level compared to the essence of the infinite power of Hashem. That when you re- reveal the essence of the infinite power of Hashem, Atika, what does Atika come from? Whatever it's it's it totally separated from the world, then you get the ultimate acceptance. That's the ultimate goal, to reach the level to connect to Atzmas Eirin Seif and realize that Hashem is ulti- Atzmas Eirin is really the real power. And never goes on to explain, he said he liked to add as follows. This yeshus, this arrogance, yesh mishayev, on a literal level, well, that was already fixed. How, when was it fixed? Through the, through the repentance of the whole month of El. A whole month of El doing tshuva. The extra psalms we say, blowing in the shofar, different uh, uh, stringency people take upon themselves, slichot, etc. Different mitzvot. Like it says in the, in the Torah, Ovachsa savia ve'ima yerech yarim, that she cried for a mother and a father for, for, for a, a month. And what is that referring to according to Kabbalah? It's referring to the month of, the month of El. Like the Arizal says clearly, the month of El. What's the month of El? The month of El is the, is the month of compassion. And in the month of El, we know the king is in the field. And especially after the days of Chai El, that Chai, the eighth day El, Chai comes from life, that brings in energy in all the ideas of El. And especially in the days of Slichot, what do we say in the days of Slichot? We say, Lecha Hashem Atzlaka. To you, Yud Kei Vav Kei is the, is, 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 is the uh, generosity of Elonu, and to you, Hashem, we have, we're upon him, we're embarrassed. What does that mean? We have the, the acceptance, Bittal, of Yira, and, and, and embarrassment, which is basically a very high level of, 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 of being over Kaddish Baruch Hu. And especially as we're in Erev Rosh Hashanah, which we know, what does it mean, Erev, right before Rosh Hashanah, which we're preparing ourselves for the new year. And especially when we come to Rosh Hashanah, we have, what's the avoid, what's the spiritual work of Rosh Hashanah? Kabbalah Israel, accepting whatever Hashem wants. And as we say, Shatam Khuni Aleikam, Hashem shall be the king of us. And so that already happened already a whole month of Elul and the, right before, after Chayel and Shuvah, that's when we're working on the Yesh Mishayev. And the Tshuva, the repentance of Shabbos Tshuva is, is the Yesh on a very, very fine level. And that's what the author explains in the Kut Torah. That what does it mean, Shuva Yisrael, Ad Hashem that we say in Shabbos Shuvah, that Yud Kei Vav Kei should be just like Shem Kim. Which is a, a level of contraction uh, compared to the uh, the atmosphere and safe, because in order to really get rid of any level of arrogance, 
It's specifically when you connect to the level of Atzmus Oyrein Saif, which is higher than Yudke Vavke. So what the Rebbe is saying is like this. Avoid of Choy the is getting rid of the arrogance. Yes, me show you. The Avoid of Shabbos Shuvah is even getting rid of the little arrogance that's left over when we're connected to Yudke Vavke. Our goal is to connect to Atzmus Oyrein Saif. That's the first level. Now, after you say Shuvah Yisrael, Return because we stumble on our sin, which we said already is the void of Sumira, that, that little arrogance, which is in the level of Israel. What does he go on? What's the next level? It says, Bring words. Hashem, return to Yudke Vavke. And then the third level is Amru Elav Kaltis Ava, and we say to Hashem, Wipe away the sins. So these two levels of tshuva is that the, the, the second and the third is that the tshuva of do good. And Bakr Shalom, which we said is learning Torah. So Rebbe says we're going to understand this based on what it's explained in the Kut Torah from the Alter Rebbe. That the three levels of tshuva, again, Sur Meira, which we went, already learned in depth, what does that mean? Getting rid of the arrogance. And Asay Toi, which is doing mitzvahs. And Bakr Shalom, which is learning Torah. They, they're connected to the three levels of our Neshama. Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama. In other words, the avoid of Sur Meira, which is for a sin, for our arrogance, that's connected to the level of Nefesh, the lowest level of our Neshama. Why is that? Because sin, Chet and Oven, sin, is only, it's only, it only exists in the level of a Nefesh of our Neshama. Like it says clearly in the Torah, HaNefesh HaChetaz. The, the place, unfortunately, where, when you live in the level of Nefesh, that's where there's room to sin. Even the Tshuva, of Surmira is also the level of Nefesh. Because what is the tshuva of Surmira that you're accepting upon yourself, you're getting rid of the uh, ego, and you're accepting upon yourself Hashem, El Malch and you're accepting upon yourself the yoke of mitzvahs. Notice so you don't want to rebel against Hashem, and you don't want to transgress against what Hashem wants. So therefore, Kabbalah, soil acceptance is on the level of Nefesh. So Surmira is connected to Nefesh. The tshuva, the repentance of Asay Toiv, what is asking to, what, is, what does it mean you're lacking on, on a spiritual level? You're lacking having tremendous love for Hashem. The first level, Samira, that was the ego, getting rid of the ego. Got it. What's Asi Toiv? You're lacking love for Hashem. You're lacking years Hashem to be in love Hashem. Because when you draw them through doing mitzvahs, which is the Asi Toiv, how do you do a mitzvah? We're not robots, you just do a mitzvah. Mitzvahs happen automatically when you have love for Hashem, and you know of Hashem. Like in Tanya, it says, they're like the wings that cause us to fly in high. And we know that the complete, uh, doing a mitzvah in a complete way, is specifically through loving Hashem. There's, yes, there's a technical part of doing a mitzvah, it's not transgressing. But if you want the mitzvahs to be on fire, on fire it happens when you love Hashem, and you know of Hashem. So that's the level of ruach. And those the emotions of the heart. Ava and Yira is Ruach. So again, so Nefesh is the first part, Sumay Ra. Kabbalah soil. Ruach is Asi Toy, which is the Ava and Yira. And the repentance of Baki Shalom, which is basically for lack, unfortunately, lack of learning Torah with comprehension, understanding, and meditation, etc. And more, more specifically, the, the Tshuva for lack of comprehending godliness. In other words, where basically godliness is not, you're not grasping it in your mind. And even when you're thinking about godly ideas, it's, 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 not, it's not registering, it's not connecting. That's the level of neshama. Like it says in the prophets, neshama is shali tavinim, but so neshama is connected to understanding godliness. And that's why when it comes to the tshuva asay toiv, it says, you have to say words. And when it comes to the tshuva, Bakr Shalom, it says, Imru Eilav to say to Hashem. Why is that? Because words, Diburim, is connected to the, the emotions. Because what's words? Words is, is basically sharing what's on your heart. Words is connected to your heart. And that's why it's connected to Ruach. <coughs> it comes from the, from the, from the, from the, from the wind of, 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 of your heart. And the, um, and, and say, saying the words, that's from your heart. And however, Machshava, Thoughts of learning that comes from your soul. And that's why it says, Imru Elov, Koil. Koil is an expression of, of, of unification. Because what's the idea? Bakr Shalom, that's what, when things get unified. So, hey, we just had a beautiful 
uh, insight into why the three levels of tshuva, in other words, sur ra is connected to the idea of the nefesh, Kabbalah soil, ashe toiv is connected to av and yir, which is connected to ruach, and bake shalom is connected to uh, connected to uh, um, to learning Torah, which is connected to neshama, which is connected to kaz through 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 your intellect. Now, but on the other hand, this that it says by tshuva of the neshama. The Shama is a very high level of Shuvah, learning Torah, connecting with your intellect, etc. So why is it Tisa Avon? Why does it say sin there? What's the connection with sin? Trevor says, well, in standard space, what it says in the Zoyar, a powerful teaching in the Zoyar, which we actually say when you go to the resting place of Atzadik, you say the mind in Lashon. So it says, in, this, uh, in a Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic uh, prayer, it says like this, Nafshon. Right, which we know already naturally referring to the nefesh, the lower part of the soul. The Elohim Kadisha is holy. Rucha, the ruach of the Rishama is holy. And then it says, Nishmasa, the highest level, the Elohim, it doesn't say Kadisha, it says Kodesh Kadashim. So nefesh is Kadisha, ruach is Kadisha, and the Rishama is Kodesh Kadashim. So this is the Rishama is called, why is the Rishama called holy of holies? Because in there, you also have the holiness of the nefesh and the ruach. So you have nefesh, ruach, neshama. Neshama is kodesh kodesh, because within it, you also have the nefesh and ruach. Now, since the nefesh and ruach, the way it's included into the level of the neshama, it's a much higher level of nefesh and ruach. You can't compare the nefesh on its own to ruach and so on, the way nefesh and ruach is sitting within the neshama. And like, for example, there we give an example, doimim tzameachai, Inanimate things that grow and things that are alive, so they don't even exist on its own level. Tzemeach and chay, but on the other hand, you also have doimish chay the way they're within the adam, which is higher than the regular doimish tzemeach chay. And the same thing also in the worlds of bri yitzir asia. So you have bri on its own, yitzir on its own, asia on its own. But then you have the way it's in the world of asilas, and the same thing also would apply to the to the ten spheres of asila of Atsilas. The way they're, 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 they're on a higher level of Atsilas. So therefore, when a person does tshuva with his neshama, so what happens then is you actually not only elevating your neshama, but you actually, you're elevating also the nefesh ruach that's in the neshama. And not only the way it's in the neshama, but the way it's also in its source. So therefore he says, but when it comes to tshuva, he says, um, tisa avayin. Why, why sin? Because when a person does tshuva in the neshama, you're not only dealing with the neshama, we're technically right, there's no sin there, but you're also elevating nefesh and ruach. So therefore, you ha- so it creates an elevation in the avoid of sumira. Beautiful. So in other words, you're right. In the neshama, there's no tisava, there's no sin there. But because in there, you also have nefesh and ruach, so if you have to elevate the sumira, and that's why it's a tisava, not for its own oven, but the oven of, of the nefesh. So from here we'll understand that in order for the avoida of sur ra, which is the level of nefesh, and ase toy, which is the level of ruach, in order for it to be complete, how does that happen? It's not enough that you do the sur ra and you do kabbalah soil and you do ase toy and you do the ruach and you do the avanira, but you also have to have learning Torah, the level of the shama, because the shama elevates it all as well. And especially, what you need to have is not only learning regular Torah, Chumash, Mishnah, Talmud, you have to learn Chassidut, Pneumius Torah, which is called the Rosin the Raisa, or Rosin the Rosin, the secrets and the secrets of the secrets, of, of the internal part of the Torah, which is called the secrets of the Torah, which connects and unifies the, the uh, secrets of the Jewish people with the secrets of our Kaddish Baruch Hu. So in other words, since neshama is the highest level and within it, you have the lowest level, so you always oh, still need neshama, you still need to learn Torah, and that elevates it all. But more specifically, what Torah they were saying is, you have to learn Yes, Chumash, Mishnah, Talmud, all the revealed part of Torah, but you also have to learn Chesilut, Kabbalah, Zohar, etc. Now even though, there is one second. What are we, there is making a case to learn premius Torah, to learn Chassidus, which in it you have Zohar and Kabbalah and everything. So I say, even though you draw down the essence of Hashem in all parts of the Torah, you learn Chumash, you learn uh, Mishnah, you, learn, you draw it down, even the revealed part of the Torah, and even let's say you're reading Torah, like for example, you're, you're, you're reading uh, the Tilim and you don't even know what you're saying, 
And the, author, and, and the, the Rebbe Hashem explains in, in, in the classic discourse in, in Tough Race Iron Base, he says that when you learn, when you read, even though you don't know what you're saying, you're drawing down from the infinite part of Hashem. So, but nevertheless, that's true. But if you want it to be revealed, if you want the essence of the infinite part of Hashem to be revealed in your life, that happens specifically by learning Exodus. Why? Because Pnimi is Abba which is the, the internal part of Chachma, which is Chassidus, is Primius Atik, it's the Primius of Keser, of Keser of Keser. So therefore the revealed part of Atik is specifically what? Through the revealed part of Atik, which is through, through Chassidus. So yes, any Torah, you connect to the essence of uh, the atmosphere and Saif, but through Chassidus, you cause it to be revealed. And especially, the Rebbe says, learning Chassidus, the way, Primius the way it was revealed in the teachings of Chassidus through the Balsham Tov, and afterwards, way it came down through the Alter Rebbe in in Chassidus Kabad, in a way of Spanish way where it's totally understood and comprehended and totally you know decked out in a beautiful way. And by learning Torah, and especially learning Chassidus, what happens is you actually elevate not only the Torah, not only the Neshama, but you elevate the Ruach and you elevate um, the Nefesh. You elevate the Asei Toiv, the Avin Yira, and you also elevate the Kabbalah soil of Surmira. Now. Rebbe goes on to say as follows. Just like the truth of the returning of Shuva Yisrael, because we Kikashagamanecha, it's not only referring to specific sins, because the fact, and we like we went before, it's about the ear ego. Because the fact is, all the Jewish people have a chazaka, an established fact that they're kosher, they're holy. And especially, we're coming after the month of Elo, and we're coming after the days of Slichas, and we're coming after Rosh Hashanah. And as we know, all the Jewish people are meritorious in judgment, up to the point that when it comes to Erev Rosh Hashanah, we know for sure we're going to be meritorious in judgment. Why do we know? Because it says in the Torah clearly, all the whole Jewish people are righteous people, and especially after blowing the shofar. And Rebbe says this is something very important, very powerful to know, that when they blow the shofar, that creates that we become tr- extremely wealth- wealthy. Like it says in Chazal, that, that when do we become misasharis masayfa? It happens right after right after blowing the shofar, and you have also the, the, the repentance of Shabbos tshuva, which is after Rosh Hashanah. And the tshuva is what only for the arrogance, and obviously, like we learned before, like on a very very far, far, far refined level, and the same thing also when it comes to the tshuva word of ase toiv for love Hashem and or for Hashem, back Hashem learning Torah. And even though you did these things before, but nevertheless, the, sh- the returning of Shabbos Tshuva is that the idea that the, the mitzvahs that we do is done with tremendous beauty on the on, 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 on next level. And the same thing also by learning Torah, and specifically by learning Primus Torah Chsidus, the way it's, and, and, and the way, especially the way, it's, the way it's been explained and revealed in, in the Chabad Chsidus. Uh, which we know is with tremendous depth and insight and richness, etc. Also, not only learning, but your futsu and teaching Torah all over the world, like Barksham we're doing here, we're learning Torah, we're teaching Torah, and it's all over the world. Up to the point where it says in the prophets, Malaha Ared Zayas Hashem. The whole world will be full of knowledge of Hashem. Just like Kamayim, like Yom Hashem, like water, like um, fills the whole earth. And the Rebbe finished up with beautiful bless- blessings. We should have a year of Torah. We should have a year of Tshuva. And we should have a year of prayer. We should have a year that we connect our Kodesh by learning Torah, by returning to Hashem and praying. And also all the blessings of all the letters of the Alabes. And the Rebbe starts by saying, Shnas Oiro, it should be a year of light. Shnas Bracha, a year of blessing. Shnas Gula, a year of redemption. And specifically, the main blessing that we should have the Geula Shlema, the complete redemption, which will happen through Mashiach Tzitkenu very, very quickly. So here we have another beautiful and powerful Chassidic discourse in honor of Shabbos Shuva, teaches us what Shuva is, working on our arrogance, working on our love for Hashem, working on our Torah, but realizing that ultimately you can't just get away with just working on your arrogance and doing mitzvahs. You also have to learn Torah, especially Chassidus, because ultimately that will elevate uh, that will elevate it all. And uh, like the Rebbe finishes off and he says, it gives us all the blessings, and with the ultimate blessing, we shall have the Gula Shlema through Mashiach. And if that's the case, God willing, our next class will be in Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh.
Have a great and blessed day.